Tommy, I don't know if you've seen Cool Runnings, but there's a scene where they arrive at the top of the hill. You know, I don't think they've ever seen black people up there before. And that was how it always was with my, me and my dad, particularly when we first, first started, how that felt. Luis, how are you? You okay? I'm really well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, I haven't seen you for so long. I know a long time no see. That's what I said. I'm, you know, trying to deal with what's happening. I'm sure the same with you. I'm sure the same with, with Mr. Smith, dealing with what they are, what's happening right now, COVID-19 and whatnot. But yeah. where are you? Are you in the I'm States? In, uh, I'm in Montreal. I'm, I'm, I'm the coach here of the team, but it's been yeah. so difficult to coach at the minute because we keep on stopping. We keep on going to bubbles and we keep on, you know how it is. It is what it is. It's not the easiest to be, pre to be prepared or to prepare a team, but yeah. it is what it is. How about, where, where are you, Tommy? Oh, I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta now for a while, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do a lot of things here, uh, uh, dealing with equality and uh, dealing with young, young people, you know. Uh, uh, the Tommy Smith Youth Initiative uh, uh, is a 501 that uh, we've been running now for quite a few years, you know, helping youngsters uh, uh, do what they should be doing, which is moving forward. Of course, you both know there's a platform uh, uh, of moving forward. A lot of platforms are moving forward. Sure. Whatever platform you're on, you've got to have an identification of it. You just can't run out there and say, my, my cool buddy was on this, man. I went with him. No, you got to think I, first. You got to think. Absolutely. You got to hit that corner going 160 miles an hour when you know that it's a 110 miles an hour curve, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you've you, you been a, a striker, too. You, you yourself, uh, Terry, right? You was a striker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, it used to be a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you but don't you know, even look like you've aged. I don't understand. I know. Look, look well, I don't that. know about that. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, well, you know how it is. When you decide to do something, you do it. When you got to yeah. hit, you got to hit. You know, when you got to move in a direction, you yeah. got to think about that direction. There's no midair for you than switching in midair. Once you get midair, you got to keep going. I've been so inspired by you and what you did um, all that time ago. And I never in my life thought there would be a moment um, like yours that would perhaps come up for me. And, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a sport which is, uh, you know, white dominated and it's, it's, there's not very little diversity here, for example. And, and um, with everything that happened in the States, it really brought up a lot of emotions for me um, because, you know, a lot of people think that it's only happening in the States, but yes, there's the, the um, police brutality in the States, but, you know, systemic racism is across the world and right. very, very, um, very, very much there and in, in Europe and England. And um, so, you know, I experienced a lot of that growing up in the UK. And, and then when I started traveling, cut racing. And so anyways, I, I, this year it's come around and got, I've got the sport now to um, kind of acknowledge that it needs to do more. And I had a race that I won at home and I got to do the stance like you did with the power, um, with the power, <laughs> with the punch in the air, just like oh, you did. Yes, I, just, yes, I was yes. like, this must be what, how Tommy felt. But obviously I didn't have the crowd like you had. <laughs> All the gold medal. <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I said earlier, that there's, there's a lot of things going into an organization. Uh, cranial thought has to be uh, put there. And uh, the, uh, the fist in the air represents the power that we need to move forward. The, uh, uh, some people call it black power. Some people call it power to move. Some people just call it power. Yeah. But it was an inner uh, a motivating method of mine to make a move as a young black man, a young black man in this country. Yep. And I wanted to, since it started at San Jose State University, where, which I graduated from, the, that platform started there. And I wanted to end it as one of the, the people who started it along with the uh, three other people there. And, uh, uh, you know, when the athletes decided that uh, uh, they didn't want to boycott, uh, we had been talking about this all year long. And I can understand that. They didn't want to boycott because a lot People had uh, other things on their minds. So it was yeah. like a democratic process of, you know, let's vote. So we voted, and the, 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 the end result was each athlete would represent himself according to how he felt the country represented them. And so okay. we all took our own stand. We shook our hand. We hugged each other. Then we adjourned the meeting. Now, this was uh, some weeks before, uh, before no, some days before uh, uh, the race. So uh, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew – I had to do something okay. to maintain a forward momentum. So it could historically move forward. Like Lewis, uh, I'm a bit older than Lewis, Lewis and I, you know, I was born in 77. 
my dad told me the story, told me how it was. He gave me the date, 16th of October, 68. That date is always going to be in my mind. I heard that story so many times. I saw the pictures so many times. I have the pictures in my, <laughs> the picture in my house. Uh, but what actually, I didn't know where the signs. I didn't know that the socks were for poverty. I didn't know that the fist up were, was for power and tranquility. And I, and I didn't know that you had your head down for hope and you're praying. Yeah. I, just, I just thought for me, black power, you know, yeah. ah, ha, ah, you know, I was like, ah, it's raw. I didn't know that there was a message with the socks, there was a message actually with the glove, and there was a message with you adding your head down. Okay. And so when I started to understand that, I, start, I started to understand that you can fight in a clever way. Because you had to do it, as you said. Maybe, maybe you didn't want to do it, but you had to do it because you had to carry on the momentum. And so you put your success on the side. You knew that something was going to happen against you, but you went with your community. How did you deal with that? Faith. Faith. I had faith in my belief, in my spiritual belief, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Same. But without work, Without work, faith is dead. You know, you can, that's why the momentum is, 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 is important. And you're very right. I had doubts about doing it, but I had to do it. You know, sometimes you have to do things that you know is right, but you're afraid to do it because it's going to hurt you later on. Because that hurt didn't bother me once I thought of who died so I could be there. And the, the latest person that died that I respected uh, more than a lot of other things with Dr. Martin Luther King only six months, uh, six months before. Yeah. And you had other very advisory people who died fighting for equality, fighting for the rights of man, fighting human rights. Yes, we were young. I just had turned 24 years old, but I was a thinker. You know, I had, had to think before I moved. It's better to think before you move than to try to change what you did because you didn't think. And you both know that sometimes you have to make a split decision thought and move that way. But you have to accept those responsibilities no matter what direction you move. And uh, so I just kept, kept, kept moving. I went back to school. I went to school at night. I was afraid to go to school daytime because my life was being threatened almost on a daily basis. Wow. I will kill you tomorrow at one o'clock. You know, wow. so I think I passed a test of durability, like a good pair of tires. <laughs> I grew up in a bad neighborhood, which I thought at the time was the best neighborhood in the world because I couldn't compare it to anything, right? So uh -huh. where I was is the best place in the world. So because you have a lot of diversity in my neighborhood, I didn't realize that I was different. When I stepped out of my neighborhood, I started to realize people started to make me feel that I wasn't human. Mm -hmm. And so it started to be difficult. And so I realized that, you know, the color of my skin was a problem what I wear was a problem. Uh, because in, in Europe sometimes, if you have a hood on, if you, so, if you have a hat on, suddenly a cap, shall I say, suddenly you, that means you're from a bad neighborhood straight away. And if you have the color to go with it, oh, that's a, that's a double bill. You know, you, you don't get in. And so I always say to people that at one point, people didn't see my color anymore because I played football. Yeah. Because I was in bracket famous. You never had that opportunity young. When you know now and you're an athlete, you uh, kind of get away with it. You know, if I come now with my hood or in a tracksuit and I walk into an amazing shop or a fancy shop, you'll say, oh, Mr. Henry, what do you want? Yeah. If it wasn't me, trust me, the security guard would have been following me or not even letting me in. So sometimes for me now to judge and know it's very difficult. But I can tell you one thing. When I went back, when I came to play in the U.S., my color came back because nobody could recognize me sometimes, depends on where, in which state we were, my color came back. And that was the first time that I went back to the first time I left my neighborhood where I was on the monks in bracket, a certain community that wasn't looking at you like you're from another planet. So when I arrived in, in New York, some people could recognize me sometimes and some couldn't. You ask for a cab, the cab, put his head down, looks, and see that you have a certain color and go like, put the light on, it's not free anymore, or off, <laughs> sorry. And I'm like, what, well, I'm gonna a minute, I'm alone here, it's a pussy, it's raining, can I get, can I get, and so I was like, it, it hit me again. Back in the days, you, you, you got 
killed for something that you're getting praised for now. Yeah. And so yes. it is kind of, that is why I say at times it's good to be stubborn. I've been called a black shit live on TV. It is what it is, you've, you've heard it before yes. also, but that was live on TV, which has made it a bit like, wow. Um, and so I used also my sponsors and sport to make sure that you can create awareness because sport is a great tool at the end yeah. of the day. You can stop talent. That's why it's good when you're at the top to make sure that you can have an impact. When I was reading and, and watching the documentary um, about you, Tommy, I, I'd seen that the Olympics committee had said that this is not a, um, this is not a platform for anything political or uh, for, you know, for anything that's not sport. And I love that you went, went against it, even though that you knew it was detrimental to your career. Um, that is such a, a, a huge risk that you took. And I, I mean, my, I, I have so much respect for you. I mean, and what's crazy is that even you passing on the baton kind of to us, like I'm finding that I found that already still to, in today's world, you know, they're like, they question whether or not this is the platform, you know, we don't like to associate ourselves with uh, politics or, and I'm like, this is not really politics. This is like, this is about humanity. And this yep. is, we have this platform as so many other sports around the world do. And we have the spotlight on us right now. What are we going to stand for? Yes, we can do and, uh, you know, perform well and, and put on a great show, but what are we actually teaching people? And I think that's, you know, you started it back then and, and I'm really just trying to, to embrace what you had done so long ago, um, I, which I really can't even imagine. I mean, I've, as I said, I've watched a lot of documentaries because school for, I don't know how it was for you, Terry, but school in England, you, you learn about white history. You don't, you don't learn about Malcolm X. You don't learn about Martin Luther the King. You don't learn about Nelson Mandela. Those no, are the things you have to do at home. You know? all, all the people, I mean, no disrespect, surely there must be some black heroes out there, black astronauts, black poets, yes, black sure. artists, black back in the days, whatever that, that can inspire you also or, or whatever it is. And I agree with you. Yeah, you, you learn in a certain way. I, I like to say you learn the history of the country that it was maybe 15 years ago or 50 years ago or 40 years ago. You don't learn the history of the country that it is now because of yeah. what happened and invasion and, and, and whatnot. But I agree with you. Yes, Lewis, it was the same. Yeah. But the, you know, the, the thing is, because fundamentally still, this, it's not changed. No. No, and that's the sad thing to think that, you know, if, um, Tommy and, you know, and Martin Luther the King were fighting, it was only, what, 60 years ago. Yes, and we still have, you know, America has really not moved um, enough and we can't stop... Um, utilizing the platforms that we have. We can't stop um, trying to encourage people to, uh, to, to educate themselves. Um, but we still have this fight and it's, we've got to keep going. We have a responsibility and the youth look up at winners. The system, human being loves winners. Don't take the pressure as a pressure that you didn't have responsibility for. It is your responsibility to accept that pressure and move forward. I totally understand, and, and this is why winners are pretty rare. That's why when you're at the top, you win, okay? And then you have that platform to be able to express yourself for a community. But we also have to think about the guys that are running the race. <laughs> Not the one that are going to win it, but I, for me, what I respect is when you enter the race and you run. That's one of the most, most important things. And one thing that I will say right now is right now, I don't know if it's going to change right now, but obviously we need to have an impact, but people are listening. This is the difference now. People are at least listening. It's very important. And what you did, for example, I always say, not obviously, I, 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 I excuse myself for the people that are blind, but I always say that there's something worse than being blind. It's having eyesight with no vision. <laughs> and you saw the future. This is why you, you, imagine, you imagine the future. And that's for me something very important because we need to think about the guys that are not going to win the race to be able to have that impact higher. Yeah. We need to think about the guys that are who were running the race because they entered it because they were not scared. This is why 
we are the winners in brackets, sorry to say, but, and then we need to have that little impact to make sure that the voice of the guys that are running the race are going to be heard. I think before now, before this time, if I had said anything, um, people would have been, had got even more defensive. And the, uh, you know, if Thierry had said too much back then, again, you'd just get negativity and a lot of pushback. But I think now that we have the mic, we have the attention, and what are we going to do with it? What do we actually want? How can we make change? It's, it's down to education. It's how the children are educated, I think, which is where it starts. But I wanted to ask you a question. I always said to people, who helps the helper? Because when you're the guy always to help, Louis, you're the same. You're always the guy that, you know, people has to, you know, you're helping people. You're doing this, you're doing that. So who helped you the most going through all of that? I'll, I'll let him since he's, he's the youngest and I'll call <laughs> his out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I, I fully agree with you with the, you know, that there's, there's faith and then there's my, my father. So, um, you know, when I was going to those races when I was a kid, you know, we were the only black people on the uh, on the race scene. And um, Tommy, I don't know if you've seen Cool Runnings, but that's always like usually yeah. my favorite my favorite movie. Um, but there's a scene where they arrive at the top of the hill, and they're the only that the, you know I don't think they've ever seen black people up there before. And that was how it always was with my me and my dad, um, particularly when we first first started, how that felt. And uh, but I was always fortunate. I was like, I know I can lean back on my dad, and you know he was that. Um, you know, when people ask me who was my hero, there are those that have laid the bridges, as you were mentioning, that, that, that I've read about and have been so inspired about for standing up against things. But my dad was the one who did it in front of me. You know, he's, when I was being beaten and, and battered and abused, he was the one wow. that would fight, would, would fight, for, me, fight for me. Wow. And um, so I was very, very fortunate to have that. But, it wasn't until I, I was born Catholic and I didn't get to really truly understand faith until I was probably in my, um, in my late, late teens, early, uh, early 20s, when I really, really started to embrace um, the word. And that's, that really helped me um, get through, particularly as I turned professional. That's what really helped me, you know, having the faith really helped me get through yeah. that period. I'm going to say my dad too, by the way, is the same with me. My dad told me the best thing ever was obviously, you know, when you arrive and obviously being black folks arriving in the country always is guys, you got to fit, make sure you fit. You don't make it put, you don't scream too much. You don't, <laughs> you know, you got to fit. My dad said to me, no, you don't have to fit. You have to belong. You always, like I always say, we we're talking about education. You're always a reflection of your education with a pinch of salt. That's going to be your character. <laughs> But I always say this one, my parents educated me, my kids re-educated me. Because your kids make you see, do stuff, and be a bit less a role. Yeah. To be able to understand how you need to speak to put the message out there a bit better. Because sometimes if you too raw with it, message won't go down too well. That is why the message of the sock, the message of the fist, the message of the head down yeah. because of prayer and hope. This is for me, you know, where you fight in an intelligent way. You know, Thierry, this, what's interesting when you said that your dad said that you have to belong, my dad would say um, something similar, but the, he would, he was, you know, he would say you, you, you will belong there one day, but right now you need to fit in. Yeah, but that's, that's because, exactly you know, the thing. Yeah, because for us, we know there were no other people, you know, there were no other people of color within our sport. And so yeah. he's like, we've got to work twice. You know, the, the conflict yeah. on a lot of black people's uh, mind is like, we've got to work 10 times as hard um, as, you know, the white kid that's next to you. And so, but I remember having to, feeling as I grew, grew up that I had to fit in to get in. That's and then once I was in, then I could, then I could, become, you know, then I could become me. I then could I be who I wanted to. You. Yeah. What, what I'm trying to say with that is Mr. Smith and, and, and obviously Lewis, you know, I don't know if you know, I love to listen to West Indian music, French West Indian music. And before he told me that, before he unleashed me, shall I say, 
you know, when you put your music, you don't want to put it too loud because you, you think that you're going to disturb because it's not the music of where you're living at the moment. You don't <laughs> want to wear your, your, your cultural clothes because you're like, ah, if I do, I won't fit in. And as soon as he told me that, uh, my headphones were loud as hell because I'm like, I'm listening <laughs> to West Indian music. I'm proud to be French, but I have some origins. Uh, sorry. That's me. And so you start to accept yourself like, like people always say, you know, um, love your enemy a bit more sometimes than, than your friend. And then the, the say says, I started to love myself. Yeah. And yeah. Because your yeah. own enemy is, it, the, the first enemy is you only. It's difficult for some people to be themselves because they are, they are, in a hurry to please what they think other people would like, you know, and you could be in your own prison all your life by mm. trying to pacify uh, the thought process of someone else. Yeah. You, you know, and you, well, what that is, is walking on water. And I, I only know one person can walk on water and, uh, uh, you know, they, his people, he, he died because people didn't believe in him, you know, Oh. Is it utterly amazing? So, mm. what, what, you, what you did, Terry, and, and, and uh, uh, what, what you're doing, uh, uh, Lewis, is 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 just taking the world, and it's molding. Well, it's it's molding because Lewis, you have a world. Terry, you have a world. Tommy, I have a world, and it's called the globe. And we're all in it. It's like stress. You know, you have stress, then you have a lot of little stressors to make that big stress. So we have more than one direction to go to help others in need. But you, you gotta keep that in mind now. But too much, this is my own makeup. Too much is too much, too much of anything is not good. Too little of the same is just as bad. Yeah. So you have to know when to say no. You have to know when to say yes, because you're living in this vacuum of being in the world. You're already here. You know you're going somewhere, and that world's going to end too. So where are you in that dash? What, what are you doing to make this end positive for the generation next to you or the people on the other side of it? So we were in a tournament recently, obviously, as you know, we get tested all the time, every two days, because yeah. same with you, I'm sure, right now. Yeah. And so they wanted to take my blood. But you know, in the US, they like to put people in a box. So they arrived and they went, what's your ethnicity? Mm. So I looked at the, at, the, at, you know, at the lady, I went, well, <laughs> if you want to go back to my older story, I don't actually know. <laughs> because we would have to go really far. And can I ask you something? I said, why do you like to box people in, in the US? There was Irish, Afro-American, uh, whatever boxes. I said, you're forgetting the most important box. I'm human. The yeah. blood place will tell you what I need. That's all you need to know. Because in Europe, you don't arrive and uh, are, you, are you Caucasian? Are you African-American? Or are you Afro-European? Are you, so I said, you're missing the main boxes, I'm human. She looked at me, she went, nobody ever gave me that one. I said, well, mm. that's the only box, I'm human, or alien. Well, I don't look like an alien. So yeah. can you put human, and I tick human. If not, the rest, I don't know. So mm. I love that. what should I do? I said, well, it's all, we, we do the blood test, and the blood test will tell you what I need or don't need. But the other thing, I'm going to take a guess on the box because there is my story is a complicated one. What's interesting here is, and I'm sure for you, Tommy, um, when I'm most, probably even more so when I'm in America, most black people don't know where they're from. Yeah. You know, I, I'll ask them, you know, you know, what's your, what's your, what's your background? Where your family from? And they're like, I'm from America, you know, I'm from they, the lost, they, they lost those roots so, so, so long ago. And, and it's really interesting for me because my family were, um, my dad's side, uh, were from Grenada in the West Indies and my whole life I just thought they're from the Caribbean I never actually um, learned where they came from in Grenada I was never taught that I, I read I read that I discovered that uh, this year so there's been a bit you know even for us that um, 
you know, for, for black people and people of color, it's, you can, you're always, you can still learn. And I've been, I've been going through a process of having to educate myself this year, more stuff that I missed when I was growing up, stuff that perhaps my dad didn't talk about. Um, and you know, what colorism is and all these different things. I'm going to read something, this one, because I always like to read it. And actually it's kind of weird because who taught me that is public enemy. A public enemy song starts with this. Have you forgotten that once we were brought up, we were brought here. We were robbed of our names, robbed of our language. We lost our religion, our culture, our God, and many of us by the way we act even lost our mind. Mm. Dr. Khalid Mohammed. And that's, <laughs> that right there, there's nothing else to explain. Yeah. If, if someone takes everything away from you, your identity, your faith, and everything that goes with it, you need to start again, refresh, and adapt to where you are. That is why most of the time people say, okay, okay, let's start from here, away from here now. Yeah. This is what we're gonna defend. Nobody's gonna move us from here. If you go back, you know that your name is not your name. Mm -hmm. You know that. But because it's your name, you have to start somewhere. If not, you're lost forever. This is for me where it starts putting houses, computers, and people that can educate people in the, in the so-called, not so-called, unprivileged era, area, sorry, where you can educate young folks to yeah. know what really happened, where they're from, in order to know where they have to go. Yeah. If you don't know where you're from and where you come from and who you are, you can never become who you got to be or who you might be. And so that's why sometimes, the bad neighborhood and unprivileged neighborhood do not get connected to uh, access to computer, access to knowledge and education. And then instead of going that way, year by year, it goes that way. And so you stay in what you know, and you come from that house, and that's what it is. You never open your eyes and your mind on everything. And I think there is nothing worse than someone that is not allowed to dream and hope. And that's what you kill by disconnecting yourself to the real world. Yeah. You don't dream and you don't hope. Thierry, first, it's so good to, to see you, man, because I don't uh, know how we, we lost time. touch, brother. We've got to get back in touch. Yes, 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 no? yes, yes. And I, and I, I, will, I, love... I, will, I will forward my number to, yeah, yeah. whatever, sorry. Yeah, no, but, you know, it's such an honor for me, man. When I heard oh, that I get to talk too. to you guys, you know. Um, Tommy, I don't know if you know, but I, 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 I Thierry, Played for. I, I grew up when I was five. I, I started su um, supporting Arsenal, and Thierry came and <laughs> was on my team uh, many many years ago. So like I was like, at the time, Thierry, you know, you're not <laughs> not actually that much older than me to be honest, but you were like a hero at the time. And oh wow, well, thank uh, you. So when we got to play, you know, it was it was incredible. I'm and then, embarrassing me. You're embarrassing uh, me. Now. Thank you. <laughs> and, and and as I, as I said, you. Tommy, you know, for people like myself, and I think for Thierry as well. We, we would be nowhere if we didn't have people like you who have built those bridges and, and, and led us to where we are today. And I see it, you know, I think maybe more now than when I was 25 and I'm 35 now and I see the responsibility I have. And, and, and I, I, I see that from people like yourself. And, and yes, winning these races is a good thing. You know, what got you across that finish line first, that's what pushes me across the finish line today to know that I can get on top and make that move. And, wow. and make it count and so i want to say a big big thank you to you just want to acknowledge you brother you're welcome so like you said nice speaking to you and let's speak soon